So we've got our quilt all loaded. Next stage is to base the quilt down. So we want to come to our top corner, needle down, needle up, brings our bobbin to the top, grab hold of both of those, and then we want to reduce our stitches per inch. So currently I've got them at 12. I can just use the minus button on my handlebars. I take it to about four, and then we're gonna go across. But the great thing about having pro stitcher is we have our channel locks. So on your sidebar, you've got your horizontal channel lock. So we're gonna chuck that one on, and then we're gonna go straight across. And then you can see I'm just guarding the fabric if I need to manipulate it at all. But because the quad is all nice and square and it's all loaded, there was no need to do a basting stitch along our wadding to line it up to because I knew it was already great. So once I've done my horizontal along the top, then I can do down my sides. So I just need to turn off my horizontal and then I can come straight forward. And I go all the way until I've reached the bottom. Bring my needle up. Cut the thread, then I bring it to the left hand side and do down this side as well. So that way all sides of my quilt are basted and held down so when we're quilting nothing's going to get caught while we're quilting. All right. So it's all basted. Next, we need to do is set up our frame space. So the important thing with Pro Stitcher Lite is we have to set up a frame space, which is the physical quilting space we can do in our throat space of the machine. So to do that, it's found in our area tab. And then you'll see one that says frame space. So just a thing with frame space, it is your physical quilting space. So remember when your quilt builds up, this back pole is gonna get bigger, especially with a super large quilt, that is gonna get larger and larger. So it's gonna take away from your quilting space. So what I like to do, get a couple of fingers and stick them behind the machine head, right? So that will mimic a super large quilt, right? So when you're doing your edge to edge, you're not gonna get in trouble later. So I bring it past my quilt top, put my two fingers behind the quilt machine head, and then hit my frame space. Then on the right hand toolbar, hit my two corner. And it will do a ding and place a point. Then I come all the way to my right hand side, and then I do the same thing, but this time I'm adding extra space at the back, right? Because if it can't come all the way forward, so we've got to imagine having that space at the back. So once I've done that, hit my two corner on the screen again. And then down the bottom, we've got our refresh. So this one here is quilt frame refresh. And then you'll get a big red rectangle. So that is our quiltable space. So from there, we can set up our area and our design. So let's come back to the top left hand corner. So if we look at the screen, my crosshairs is where my needle is. And we can see it's outside the frame space because we've allowed that extra for later on. So I've got to bring that into my frame space, which means I then also have to bring my quilt down, right? So this is my quilt top here, but this is where I can physically start on the screen. So I've just got to unclamp it on the side, right? unlatch it, and then roll the two poles forward which will then bring my quilt forward. Lock it back in, and that way our quilt now is within our frame space. Next, we need to create our area. We've got two options of area. For doing an edge-to-edge -edge design, you're going to use the two-corner area. The multi-point is used for different things, which we'll talk about in another video. So, two-corner. I am looking at my quilt, I am outside my quilt top. So I'm actually going to be stitching straight onto my wadding and backing. So that's why it's important to have your wadding 
and backing larger than your physical quilt top. You can't have them the same size. So I'm about one inch to the side and one inch up the top. Then I'm going to hit my two corner. It places a point. And then I'm gonna come down to my right hand side. Again, I'm gonna be one inch past my quilt top and I'm gonna hit two corner again. So what that has done has created now a pink box. And that is our quilting area. So that is the size of our quilt top, but it's only the width, right? So on our side panel, if we're in the area, we can go in and type in our area height. So this quilt, let's say, I'm not actually sure because I didn't measure it, so, but that's okay. It's always better to be larger because we can take away the design, but it's much, much harder to add in a design. So I'm gonna make this much larger than the quilt. I'm gonna say it's 50 inches and then click enter. And there we go. If we hit now the house button, that will refresh our screen to include our area. So that pink box is the physical quilt. The red box is the area we can stitch in. So from here, we need to choose a design. We go to our file tab. Notice how there's a file and area. You don't wanna do that one. You wanna do your file tab, then design. Your latest designs will always be in your drop down, so whatever you've quilted last will be there. But otherwise, if you click open, it will open up to your designs. And we're gonna go into Pro Stitcher Designs and Continuous Lines. So these are all designs that are built into the Pro Stitcher Lite. Of course, you can go online to many different websites, Quiltable, Urban Elements, and Bright, all different designers who have designs for sale. So this design, it's the quilt is a floral. So let's go choose something nice and cute. One of my favorites is the field of flowers because it's a larger design and it just covers the whole quilt. So select design, click open, and then it will bring your design onto the screen. It will always open your design where your crosshair is, right? So your start point is that green circle cross and it will open your design there. And then the red circle cross is your end point. So we've got our design. We can see it's physically bigger than our frame space. So we have to resize the design to make sure we have enough space to be able to quilt. Remember, we've already allowed extra for when it's quilted. So we could go pretty close to the maximum size of the frame space. So to change the size, we're now going to be modifying the design. So we go to our Modify tab. In the Modify tab, we come along to our Resize button. Then on our right-hand size, we have our tools. So right now, I've got my width selected and I can change my width, but we've got this lock button. Clicking the lock will change the height and width together to keep it in proportion, which is what I like to do with my designs. So I've locked it and then I'm just gonna hold down the minus until I get it to a size that I like. And we can see that is perfectly gonna fit in my um, workspace and it will also allow me some extra space top and bottom so I can line up on my rows. So that's a great size. Next thing we need to do, we need to fill a quilting area. So we need to repeat the design. We're going to do that in our repeat tab. What I like to do, quickest and easiest way, once you've changed the size of the design to what you like, hit this fill button. What the fill button does, puts as many full designs as possible into the area. And you can see it's left a space all the way around the edge because that's as many full designs as it can do. But we can override everything. If we go back up to the top, we can see it over here. So in our repeats, we've got four repeats. We're gonna go to five. And that way it's gone over the edge of our area, which is completely fine. That's what you want to do. Next, we need to change to our vertical. And we're gonna do another vertical repeat. 
and now it is completely outside our area. But what you notice is there's almost like a gap between each row. So let me zoom in. There's this gap that would be really quite prominent if you were to stitch it out. So within the vertical, you have a gap. So this gap actually moves the rows closer together. So then it looks continuous. And that way, it will stitch the design much nicer and give you a nicer finish. Once you've set your design to that size, so all the way bigger than your area, you're going to hit baseline. So what baseline does, it basically sets the design as one. Because right now, it's a, a lot of designs just joined together in rows. So we hit baseline, and then the Pro Stitcher knows to treat that as one design. So once we've done that, we need to get rid of everything on the outside of our area because we don't want to quilt that. We only want to quilt what's inside. So to do that, we go to our Modify tab and then we go to our Crop. Within Crop, we've got a few different crop options. We can crop on the outside, the inside, or the start and end. So we want to crop everything on the outside and that gets rid of it all. But notice how we have all those green and red dots. It looks like a Christmas tree. That is a stop and start point because we've gone and literally sliced off the design. So there's a magic button over here called edges. What edges does, as soon as we click it, see they all disappear and just leave the original start and stop. What that did is close the design on the edge. So if I go and show you, I'm gonna turn my area off we can see it much better. See on the side, it's going to join that design together. If I undo, you can see all our stop starts and there's dotted lines in between, right? So doing edges closes that design off, which is what you want, because that will make a much better stitch out. So we've done that, we've edited it again, so we need to hit baseline, and then we're ready to stitch out. Before you stitch anything out, I would suggest saving the design because you could have to stop at any point, you could have a power cut, and then you have to remember how many repeats you did, what resize you did, all these things you did to the design to recreate it. So from experience, make sure you just save the design. It's so much easier. So file, save, and selected. That will open up your designs folder. Right, I wouldn't recommend saving it in your continuous line. I would go to your PS tutorials, and then you can see I've saved a bunch of previous ones in here. So you can go in and rename the quilt. So this one is just a repeat field of flowers, and then hit save. And now if anything does happen, I've got that to call back on so I can quilt it out much easier. So we've saved it. Now we're ready to quilt. So this is the exciting part, right? So to quilt anything, we go to our Pro Stitcher tab. We hit our quilt button. Then on the right hand side, we need it to stitch. We've got tie offs at the start and end, and we've got our pull up arm. Next thing you do is you hit your run, and then you just verify your settings. So we're gonna stitch, we're gonna tie off, we're gonna do five tie-offs. Pull-up is on, speed 73%, stitches per inch, four. Whoa, that's very large, because that was our basting stitch, right? So you need to make sure you change your stitches per inch. You can do that on the right-hand side over here, and just increase it, or you can do it with your handlebars as well. Both will work. So this sort of design, I would stitch between a 10 and a 12 stitches per inch, and then we're ready to rock and roll. So I hold my top thread, right? Holding my top thread, you can see it there. And then on the screen, I hit proceed. The machine will move and it will drop a stitch. Then it will unlock the motors so then you can move the machine and pick up that stitch. So now I have both top and bottom threads. I then hit my resume machine will move back. We'll do our tie off stitches.
and then we're away. So the reason this is called edge to edge quilting is because we go all the way over the edge. That way we get a perfect finish inside. So we'll let that one stitch out and then we'll come see you when we get to the other end.